Hello, and thanks for dropping in. I have just wiggle waggled this machine a little bit in order to hook up the one of the external floppies. So I don't need to worry about any hard drive coming up today. I do not set these here and try and avoid any sort of hardness. I'm going to take a typical workbench disk. I'm going to put it in. Hello. This is into the drive inside the Amiga 2000. Hopefully it will boot up. Oh yeah, I was going to put this in my camera bag. All right. I will see about that. So I have a mouse with a mouse pad. Is it working? It is working. So workbench is coming to life. I suppose I should let this do its thing and then I will try something here. It does take a lot. Okay, workbench. I'm going to stick Amiga Extras in here. Let's see what it comes up and says. Now, once again, do I trust any of these discs? No, not really. And also, got to be so careful. See, I was just about to pop the disc out and said, no, I want to do more. It's doing it again. Are you done? Never take the disc out when the drive lays it on. All right, I'm going to do something brave. Brave. This is a brand new unopened box of discs. Brand new. Gold Star MF. Double D's. Hmm. Where did my little screwdriver go? There. The cellophane has been in place, I would suspect, for more than 30 years. And it is quite happy to stay there. Oh my word. There is, supposedly, like some sort of thing on this where I can rip this. But it's not really happening. All right, I'll go back to the bottom and see if I can dig my way in a little. Now there, I ripped off a little wee bit, which did very little. See, I don't want to really hurt the box. Okay, okay, maybe. Oh yeah, a little bit of nothing. You would think once. You, okay, aha, uh -huh. is that the thing that? No. Oh, come on. You can't be that stuck. Aha, okay. I finally got the screwdriver in. Maybe this will prove helpful in getting all of this off. Okay. Now, I think what I will do, I was going to do this before. I like to keep all the crud together. All right, so here is a box of discs that was made oh, 30 or more years ago. Let's see what we have. Ooh, they're all in little plastic sleeves. Now, one thing about all of this, do I know if these disk drives are perfectly functional and reliable? No, I don't. And this one is missing the front, which makes it a little more challenging to line up the disk. 
We're going to pop that in. It's probably going to come up and say bad. And it does. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to click on the right mouse. Go up above. Disk. Initialize. Please insert disk into to be initialized into DF2. Continue. And I will continue. Okay to initialize disk in the drive DF2. All data will be erased. Well, there's never been data on this disk. So I will say okay. And then we'll see. We will see if this actually formats. There's the little plastic sleeve. Uh-oh. I thought I heard something not good there. And here are disk labels. Aren't they magical? Got to be careful that disk labels go on well, because if they stick up or do anything, they can interfere. So as exciting as this is, we will now format. 28th of... 30, 49 to go, 31, 32, 33. So it does sound promising. It does. Now the box is in nice shape. Now if this works, oh, I may. I may try and copy workbench onto it. I may not. Uh oh. There's a horrible sound. Oh, there was a horrible sound. But it seems to be doing okay. Nope, there's a horrible sound. But it seems to be carrying on. Let's see how this actually finishes up. There is that wah 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 sound that happens. Initializing disk. It says it's empty. Let's see if it comes up with anything. Hmm. Well, that went well. So there's the workbench icon. And there's the empty icon. Well, if I click on or double click with the left button, it will open up and show me things. And indeed, the typical workbench disk, it doesn't look like much, but it's pretty full. I suppose, just for fun, and this is the beautiful thing about way back when, which of course is now like, well, everybody does that now, I will drag workbench over the empty. And it is going to tell me, put workbench 1.3 from disk into DF0. The two disk in DF2. And I shall continue. I'm I'm assuming because it formatted the disk that it had the uh, the right protect was not invoked, and that is on a disk like this. There's a little thing right there. You see that little hole? There's that little hole, and that is how you write protect a disk. Um, and now that I think of it. Let me look in here. If the hole is closed, and there's a little slider, usually it takes a little pen, or sometimes, depending on your fingernails, you can just slide it across. But if it is open, and you can see through it, it means you cannot write to this disk. And there are good reasons to have that like that. And it will warn you. I will tell you, oh, I'm sorry. You can't do that. It will warn you. So it is copying. It's about half done. I know it's exciting. I know. But these things sometimes got to be done. Now, the other thing I thought I might do, I know that when I plugged this drive in before, nothing seemed to work. That is unfortunate. It is. But these other two have never been tested. Now, I did not have this drive plugged in directly to the computer. I had it plugged into this drive, 
because you can daisy chain them. Now, with the trouble I was having because I was plugged in, like, is there trouble with this thing daisy chaining or is there trouble with this drive? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a mystery. But we'll see. Now that's how we troubleshoot. So we're almost done. And this copy is finished. And indeed, it will come up. Tell me that I have Workbench 1.3 and a copy of Workbench 1.3. I will click on that. I believe if I go up here somewhere, I can rename this, which means that using this somewhat mangled keyboard, I can copy that. I can change this, and I think I'm going to call it one point one point three two. All right, so this drive seems to be okay. So with great care, I'm going to take this out. And with great care, I'm going to take this out. Now, in the world of troubleshooting, oh, and you know what? I am going to. I, I should use a black Sharpie, but I'm going to use a purple one. One point three point two, And I'm going to put 2024. All right, so this was copied now. Right now. All right. Now, really, with these things, it's not good to plug things in. With the machine on. I guess with none of them it really is good. But what I'm going to do, this driver had trouble with. Now, does that mean that that driver has trouble? I don't know. I'm now going to make an attempt. An attempt. A good attempt, I think, at turning this pile of drives ever so slightly and plugging this. The cables are not very long, and they are kind of used to the way that they were. All right, I'm going to turn this a little bit more. Okay, I can better see where I'm going. It doesn't mean that I can get there, but I am trying. Oh, come on. Come on, you weenie. Okay. All right. It's on. It's secure. It's okay. I believe. I think. So, I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to take my freshly copied Workbench 1.32 disk. Aha. Uh -huh. There is trouble in the land, I believe. Because, as you see, it is not coming up and looking for workbench. This is what happened when I connected this drive. Right now I've connected this drive to this drive. So, is the trouble with this drive? Probably not. Is it with this drive? Probably not. Is there trouble with daisy chaining this? Or maybe I've gone over. Oh, and now it's asking for workbench. Okay. Let's see what happens with workbench. Let's see if it wants. Oh, it is asking for workbench. Now I gave it. This is what, the one I copied. I've not booted with that one. I will try booting with this one. Nope. Okay, we definitely have some sort of weirdness going on with this other drive connected. And it is connected well. 
So I am going to turn that off, unplug this drive from this drive. Whoa. Here we have another. These cables, they're just not very long. They're just not. And I liked, uh, there's a bit of a twist to them. And getting them to line up just so is challenging. See, I'm going to watch this stuff here and see what comes up. I'm suspecting. I don't remember there being a limit on you could only have one external drive connected. Maybe there is. Okay, we are looking for workbench. So I'm going to put workbench in. Not happening. All right, I'll put in the real workbench, not just the copied workbench. See, the other thing you can have, da -da -da. okay, we're back to where we started. So I'm thinking there's a reasonable chance that these disk drives are fine. But at the moment, they just don't. Not for this one. So. I'm going to have to do some serious shuffling here and try putting different drives here and plugging in directly. The cable is really not long enough. That's one of the things that was nice about some of the non-Commodore disk drives. I like these. I like the little check mark. But some of the non-ones were smaller, more compact, tidier, neater. My favorite was one that actually had two drives in one. It was way smaller than this. And it had a longer cable. All right. Well, that's enough for today. I really want to get an idea of what's up with these. So, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for coming. Bye for now.